welcome back to my channel. So I was currently working on a different video for Nicole Kessinger and her phone bill. And then as I was reviewing the phone bill again for the hundredth time, um, August 14th at 2.06 a.m. just stuck out to me. 2.07 a.m. stuck out to me. And I kept thinking, why is that just ringing a bell? So I went back to my boxes of notes and a year and a half ago when I first started going through and really re like deep diving into the discovery, I used to go like page by page and it sounds pathetic, I know, page by page and I would highlight what stuck out to me and then I would write on a post-it note why it stuck out to me. So I went back and I was digging through all my notes and um, luckily this um, this page of the discovery was only, let me see, it was only page 22 so I didn't have to go far and it's a supplement report by Officer Goodman and on this report it said that um, he tried calling Chris on August 14th at 2 a.m. and he was like pretty much playing phone tag with Chris. There's an actual body cam video of this interaction with Chris and Officer Goodman. I'm going to include that in this video. But right now we're going to look at her billing period for August 14th through September 13th. This Verizon bill for Nicole Kessinger is still in the discovery. So if you want to go look at it for yourself, I believe it's on page 998. The mistress has changed her stories quite often with every interview and I feel she switches things around based off what she thinks Kobach has recovered through her phone or what he might know. She, In her interviews she does, I personally think she does a lot of fishing. She'll ask questions or she'll say things and in your head you're thinking why is she bringing this up and I seriously believe she's just fishing to see what Kobach might know. She said in the beginning she wasn't really worried about Shanann. She wasn't worried about the girls. She thought this chick just took off for a day. She'll be back the next day. It wasn't a big deal. So looking at August 14th, this is the time that she now says she switched her story around when Kobach started asking her more in details about her phone calls. And she said this is the time that Chris was having to comfort her and make her think everything was okay because she was really worried for Shanann and the girls. Um, she said she was telling him, where's your family, Chris? Where's your family, Chris? Did you do something to them? If you did something to them, you're going to ruin your life and you're going to ruin my life. So at 12.08 a.m., Chris calls her and they speak for 31 minutes. So that takes them to roughly around 12. 43 a.m. Then at 1 12 a.m. she calls Chris and she speaks with him for three minutes. So they hang up around 1 15 a.m. At 1 51 a.m. she's Chris calls her back and they speak for eight minutes. So around 1 59 they hang up. At 2 06 a.m. Chris calls her back and only speaks to her for one minute. At 2.07 a.m., so right after they talk, she calls him back and they speak for 11 minutes. Now let's look at uh, Officer Goodman's report of him trying to get a hold of Chris. At approximately 2 a.m. on Tuesday, August 14, 2018, I contacted Christopher to gather some information that was required on the missing persons report. So he calls him and he asks him for like the girl's height, weight, any scars or marks. He also asks his questions about Shanann. When I tried to speak with Christopher at that time, I had called the telephone number he had provided and it gives Chris's phone number. Several attempts had been made to call Christopher, but when the number would be connected, there was just dead air. And you'll see that in the body cam video where Officer Goodman is calling him and he's like, hello, Christopher. So it sounds like Chris picks up, but doesn't say anything. At approximately 2.05 a.m., I received a call from Christopher from a different telephone number, and this is Chris's work phone. So Chris doesn't call him back on his personal phone. He calls him from his work phone. Why? Christopher told me something that had been wrong with his telephone, and he had now been calling me from his work telephone. 
While we know based off the mistress phone bill, there was nothing wrong with Chris's personal phone because he was calling the mistress. Let's review. At 1.51 a.m., Chris calls the mistress and speaks with her for eight minutes. That gets them to 1.59. At 2 a.m., Officer Goodman is trying to get a hold of Chris. Chris is answering, but there's dead silence. Then at 2.06 a.m., he calls the mistress and speaks with her for only one minute. I personally believe that he calls the mistress, this is my opinion, and he's telling her, hey, they're trying to call me right now. What should I say? What should I do? This is pretty late, you guys. Two o'clock in the morning. I mean, I don't know. I didn't realize that they make all these phone calls so late um, to law enforcement. So I wonder if he's like kind of scared or kind of panicking. Like, what should I say? Um, And then the mistress saying, well, call him back. Call him back. And I truly believe the mistress wanted to hear what this conversation was about and what was going to be said so that's why chris called back with his work phone and the mistress is on his personal phone listening to whatever chris is telling officer goodman and some may say that's irrelevant if she was listening to this conversation between officer goodman and chris but to me these little bits of pieces of facts when you look at the bigger picture are important especially if you think others are involved in this case like I personally do now let's look at the time frame at this point the mistress has now said that she's really scared at this point she's really worried for his family she can't sleep and Chris had to keep calling her I personally believe she wasn't worried about the family at all I think she was worried about herself I think she was scared because the detectives were involved and she knows that they're going to end up finding out who she was and they're going to want to talk to her. I believe that she wanted to know every single detail Chris was saying to law enforcement to make sure when she does talk to them, they're on the same page, her and Chris, on what they say. And I personally believe that Chris knew the mistress was going to talk to law enforcement. I believe my opinion is that she probably told Chris, hey, I'm going to talk to them. They're going to find out about me. This is what I should say. What are you going to say? And Chris also says that in his prison interview, and either Chris calls her or she calls Chris, but that the mistress starts asking Chris questions that only he would know like what yoga studio I go to, something about her dog. And Tammy drops the ball on that part right there, in my opinion, because she's like, oh, does she think it was Shanann? But in reality, I think Chris was trying to you know, say that the mistress was testing to see if law enforcement was on that other end before she started talking to him. And I think that's a very important, that part in that interview, because why would the mistress, if she had nothing to hide and didn't know anything about Chris killing his family why would she care if law enforcement was on that other end and if you didn't know anything that went on like oh my gosh have they have you heard anything oh my god are you okay stuff like that instead she's really scared to say anything what were you scared you were gonna say and why were you scared law enforcement was on the other end all right guys so now let's look at the body cam video and see the interaction for chris and officer goodman that's him okay let me just come on this officer goodman is this christopher Hang up on me again. Hello, Christopher. Christopher. Yeah. Um, this officer good. Yeah. Just gonna 
keep it recording so in case he calls back and get him. Hello, Christopher. Is this, this is Officer Goodman, Frederick Police Department. Are you there? Hello? Hmm. Is that, and that's the number you called and it went right through last time you had contact with him? 910-309-1702. That's what's coming in. They don't have a house phone? This is Officer Goodman, Frederick Police Department. Hey, this is Chris Watts. I was trying to call you back from my personal phone. Kept saying call failed, but I just used my work phone. Oh, this is your work phone? Okay. So um, we're just trying to uh, get some um, some of your uh, wife and kids' information entered in to uh, put some alerts out there. And I just need to get some okay. inf information about the kids. Um, do you know how uh, on Bella... Do you know her height, weight, hair color, and eyes? So, height would be 42 inches. Okay. Weight would be 40 pounds. Okay. Hair color would be brown. All right. Eye color would be brown as well. Okay, does she have any um, scars, marks, tattoos? No. Okay, and then on Celeste, same thing. So she is 37 inches tall. Okay. She is 37 pounds. Okay. Blonde hair. Eyes. Hazel eyes. Hazel. Okay, and again, no scars, marks, tattoos? No. Okay. Okay, uh, we're just going to get that uh, information out, um, and we're just going to keep. It. Oh, does um, does Shannon have any scars, marks, or tattoos? She has a well, the scar on her forehead only pops out every once in a while it's from that car wreck she had a long, long time ago, but no tattoos. Okay, is it really a visible scar or no? No, it's just like only when like, you know, like only if she's like really heated. Okay. She's and like outside running around a lot. Okay. So oh, so it's like when there's a lot of sun. Yeah. Okay. And where is that on her forehead? Uh, Left, middle. Yeah, it's like right in the middle of forehead, like right, like uh, kind of like it runs like right in the middle, like just above the no bridge of the nose, and it runs down. It's like where the like glass stuff went to her forehead for that car accident. Now, when you say goes but down, it, goes down towards yeah, the right, mouth? It, it, it goes like, it goes up and down, so side to side. Okay. But like, you have to really look for it, but like, it's it's there. Like, if she's like outside running around, it just kind of comes through. Okay. So, since the other officers have talked to you, has anything else come to mind that you can think of to help us try to figure out what's going on, where she is? Not, nothing's come across. Just a bunch of text messages from a lot, a lot of friends just reaching out to me, just seeing like if if they could help or whatnot. But nothing new. Okay. 
can't think of anybody, any other names or anything that that uh, come to mind that we could call. No, not not no no new names right now. Everybody else, it's just it's just been like consistently with the same people just reaching out to me. Okay. A lot of phone calls in North Carolina, but people I haven't heard heard from for a long time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you hear something, um, obviously. Let us know as Definitely. soon as you can, and uh, if you can think of anything, if anything, you know, you think of that that might help us locate her, um, just let okay. us know, okay? Okay, thank you very much, sir. All right, you have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye.